We know about fight, flight, and freeze that happens due to like an acute stress response or when we are feeling triggered or when we are in the middle of being manipulated, hurt, or otherwise by a narcissist, right? But <clears throat> what is fawning? Fawning is also part of that. It's fight, flight, freeze, and fawn. Those are responses to the, the trauma, to the experience in the moment, to your brain going into a protective strategic defense mode, keep you safe, right? So fawning in particular, people get confused about or they don't, haven't heard of or they're unaware of. So let's talk a little bit about it. It is the use of people pleasing to diffuse uh, the conflict or to earn others approval. So it's sort of the gateway to codependency, so to speak, but it is the impulse to people please in order to make everything okay, in order to make yourself feel safe, in order to feel like you're able to diffuse the situation around you so that you will be safe, no one will fight, things will calm down, that, that's, that's what it is. So it's a way of creating safety in, um, in connections with others by acting out the imagined expectations of that person. So we know when we are with a narcissist and they are, say they're gaslighting you, and they're projecting and things are getting more and more disturbing for you and you're getting more and more uh, activated into this trauma response of fawning if this is how how you behave in it with a narcissist if this is your um, personal strength so to speak in defense then you might do things like mirror back to them what it is you know they like you might get soft with your voice you might offer to do things for them you might beg and plead. You might um, pretend nothing's going on, like they're not really that upset and just be really, really nice to them. Or you might apologize a whole lot. You might, so things like that of that nature, anything people pleasing, you might do in order to sort of shift that narcissistic person away from the tantrum that they're having or the, uh, what they're doing in the moment, the gaslighting or anything like that. So what does it look like? Funning can look like overcaring, overgiving. And remember, when we're, we're talking about this in relation to a response to a narcissist, so some people freeze, they disassociate from the moment, they disconnect, they freeze. And the narcissist is just going on and on and they're just frozen sitting there and they say, why didn't I say something? Or I couldn't even react, okay? Some people fight and they get, why are you, what are you talking about? I didn't do that. You're crazy. That's not happening. You know, like then the narcissist will be saying that. And then, then they might say back, wait a minute, step it up, step back a second. You're the one who, and so then they go head to head with the narcissist. And that's the type that is the fight response, right? They're willing to step in and that's their protection mechanism is to just shut it down with arguing or fighting back. So, and then there's, the flight, some people will just take off. Most of us, that one's a little different. So by flight, it might be avoid, avoid the conversation and just like try to dart away from the topic. And then others of us, signs, so we're when we're in that situation, signs might be over care, over giving. So you know that they're about to tip over into doing something really toxic. And so you start you know, can I make you something to eat? Can I do this for you? Can I do that for you? When it wasn't even asked for it, it's not necessary, right? You're overly giving, hiding your feelings and giving pleasing reactions instead. So you are livid at the things they are saying. You are super angry or you're hurt or you're ready to cry and, and like, just say, how could you do this to me? And instead you say, and you, and you say, I, that's okay. I understand. I understand how that it must be hard. Or, you know, you try and you're, you're overly empathizing. You're, you're pretending that you're not hurting or you're not angry or you're not whatever. And instead you please, you people, please. Um, it might okay. be soothing them when you are the one who was wronged. I'm kind of been talking about that, right? So you have a three hour thing going on. You know how those go with a narcissist and, and, or, or longer or shorter, whatever, but, and then you find yourself holding them, soothing them, talking them down, saying, oh, did you get your feelings hurt? I'm so sorry, that must have hurt your feelings and like soothing and soothing and soothing. Okay, that's fawning behavior. Going invisible, hiding uh, even from yourself, agreeing when you are the one who was right 
right? We do this a lot just to, just to stop it. Right. Acting out of guilt. So you don't actually want to be doing something, but you're doing it out of guilt. They've guilted you into something. Narcissistic mothers are famous for that, guilting you and you're doing it anyway because you're fawning in response to them. Feeling responsible for the narcissist's reactions. Well, it was my fault that they did that because blah, blah, blah. And instead of saying, wait, they're a grown adult, they make their own choices. They chose to do that. And, and then in response, doing some of the other behaviors, right? So you're acting out of that feeling of responsibility for them or covering up for them even is kind of fawning. The enabling behavior of covering up what they're doing and, and making excuses like, well, they had a really hard childhood and they never learned how to have healthy, you know, um, debate, healthy argument within a household. And so they just get this way. It, it's okay. So it's excuses, but it's, it's, that's more enabling, but it's also a form of pleasing and fawning, right? Enablers tend to fawn a lot. Um, compromising yourself and your values. Well, we're doing that all the time around them, but you're compromising yourself and your values in a way that is pleasing to others. And you are sucking up what you really want to do and pretending that your real true feelings don't exist. And um, you're doing all of this. All of this is to keep the peace. Okay. So why, why do we do this? We know that they're the ones being manipulative. We know they're gaslighting. We know they're half of them, most of them are cheating. They're lying. They're, if it's a parent, they are manipulating you from the day you're born. They are not letting you individuate. They're, they're not letting you have your own life. They're controlling you financially. They're doing all these horrible things, okay? Why the heck are we fawning? Well, it's an instinctual trauma response, okay? To fawn is an in instinctual trauma response for some people. Not everyone does this. This is kind of, I hear of it often, but not always, certainly not always. Okay. So if you don't do this, you probably fight or freeze. If some people do this and they're doing it to avoid conflict, why do they want to avoid conflict? Because what has conflict ever gotten them, but, but being the one who is to blame or if they're not like, say they're growing up in a family, maybe this people pleasing one had to watch one of their siblings be the scapegoat. And so they're scapegoated too, but not quite as hard. And so they're watching their sibling and they're an empathic person just by nature. And they're watching, they don't want the argument. Some people are fearful of any argument because they had so much of it growing up or they, or they just are more naturally sensitive people to you know, extreme moods like that. And so the fawn response is a way to avoid that conflict. It's a way to diffuse it and it's a way to control it. It's a way to step in and say, oh, okay, this is something I can do about it. I can take it on myself. I can carry it all on my back and I can pretend it doesn't hurt. And that way everything will go from here to down here and I'll be able to go on with my day even though now I'm carrying the pain. It may, it doesn't always, but it may start in childhood as a maladaptive survival trait that keeps a child safe and allows them to have one ounce of feeling they have some control of their own safety.